You know how that Phil Collins song is supposed to be about a man who saw someone drowning and didn't save them. I wasn't going to be that person who let someone die when I could have done something that night. I was sitting on my couch, exhaling smoke when the feeling came to me. I went numb, and it felt like a movie was playing inside my head. I could see a man driving drunk on the highway outside my house. I could see him struggling to round the first corner you hit when you leave town. I could see him falling asleep. He wasn't going to make it much further. Bushy eyebrows, beard just starting to grey, a face hardened by tobacco, whiskey and work. He looked like so many of the men I grew up with in rural Washington. I could even hear a static-choked Bob Seger song softly coming out of the speakers of his truck. I could see him drifting to the side of the road as he went up the long, flat, straight stretch of wet highway in front of my yard. He was going to crash and die. I could feel it in my bones. I ran out my front door and into the frigid sideways rain of a cold winter night. I could see the lights of a truck nearing on the highway. I ran out to the road and started waving at the truck as I watched it approach. I caught my breath as the truck slowed and stopped next to me. The man was perplexed when he saw me standing there in the rain by the side of the road, but I could see relief in his eyes. Let me give you a ride home, I told him. His name was Tom. His son had died a year before from drugs. He was in a dark place. I got him home. It felt good. It happened again a few weeks later, when I was sitting at home after getting dropped off by my friends after going to the bar. A few drinks deep, I was drifting around my house, drunk and lonely. My mind raced to the inside of a cold, dark tool shed I had never seen before. I saw a frail woman, probably sixty. She was setting something up in the rafters of the cold and dark shed. I couldn't see exactly what it was, but I had a sinister feeling about it. My mind then took me out of the shed, pulling away as if my field of vision was a camera on a track going backwards out of the space like in a movie. In a swift flash, I was off of her property and on a country road I recognized. I had driven by this woman's house before. It was a worn-out rambler on the road behind the local grange. I could be there in less than ten minutes. I got there in maybe four minutes, racing up the wet road. I rushed into the woman's shed and found her standing on a stool, the noose in her hand. Her name was Linda. She was a widow who never had children. We talked. She promised me she wouldn't think about doing what she was going to do again. She wasn't actually going to do it anyways. I didn't believe her. You're probably wondering where this newfound condition came to me from. It was a simple answer to me. I had just moved into a new rental house, and on one end of the property was a cemetery. I swore it even had an underground power line that ran through it. I felt I had some odd new energy coursing through me ever since I had moved in there. The premonitions felt like a dreadful curse at first. I would start to get a nauseous feeling in my stomach wherever they would come. I tried to fight them. Then I realized I could kind of become a real-life small-town superhero, and I started to embrace them. I would sit at home, waiting for something to come to me, hoping I would get to help someone that night. I saved a child from drowning. I put out a house fire before the sleeping family even knew their stove was about to burn down their home. I found a young boy who was lost in the woods and going to freeze to death. A few of the stories of my heroism ended up getting back to the TV stations down in Seattle, and it was eventually connected that some 41-year-old single guy who worked at a chain hardware store had saved multiple people in separate incidents. The TV reporters were dogged. They stayed on me until I caved and allowed one of them to do some kind of puff piece about me being a guardian angel. I did an interview high as fuck. But whatever, they aired it and paid me two hundred dollars. I knew I shouldn't have done it. She came to my door that night around midnight. The ringing of the doorbell woke me up. 
I grabbed the flashlight taser I kept by my bed and crept to the front door. I tucked the taser light away once I saw her standing there on my dark front porch, her long black hair half in her pale face. Her body was thin and lithe, cased in a long black dress. She appeared harmless. I opened the door and she just stared at me for a few seconds like she was trying to confirm who I was by studying my face. Silent all the while. Can I help you? I asked. She walked away without saying a word. I was so stunned I didn't get a word out until she was almost in her car. She just ignored my plea for her to come back and drove away into the night. The visit told me to stop what I was doing. Stop helping. Don't respond to the visions. The next night I was presented with the vision of a middle-aged man. Wedding ring. The kind of guy who looked like a dad. He got hit by an unexpected snowstorm while hiking in the mountains and was lost. What he didn't know was he was just twenty yards away from the parking lot and the safety of his truck, but he couldn't see it through the snow and he was too tired and cold to make it at this point. I could be up at that parking lot in less than thirty minutes. I could save him. But I wouldn't. Something told me not to do it. And he, just as something was sending these messages to be the hero, something was now creeping into the back of my head, telling me it would not end well for me and not because of the snow. I had to stop interfering. I took down a few drinks, hoping getting drunk might block out the messages of this poor man's fading fate. It didn't work. I kept getting visions of that man lost up in the snow. He was now struggling to move. He wasn't going to be able to keep it going much longer. Unless I went up there and helped him. I couldn't watch a man die in the movie theatre in my head. I jumped in my truck and drove up into the mountains. The snow was falling hard when I got to the parking lot. I had visions the entire way of where the man was. I knew he wasn't far from the lot and was now crawling through the snow, wasting away the last few minutes of his life. I trudged through the snow in the direction where I was sure he was. I came across someone dressed in all black first. They were standing over something on the ground nearly buried in the snow. It was the woman who showed up on my doorstep that night. She crouched down and held on to whatever was on the ground below her. I held myself there and watched what she was doing. Her hand was on the chest of the man on the ground. Visions flashed into me. I was in the POV, of the man on the ground in the snow, looking upward at the face of the woman in black, her pupils wide and black, her skin ashen white, and her hand strong on my chest, feeling like it was pushing me down into the ground. She was taking away the man's life at that very moment. I could feel the man go still. Then the woman in black turned around to me. I started to backpedal towards my truck. She didn't say anything, just moved quickly towards me. I could feel a powerful anger rushing at me. It seeped into my muscles and made movement difficult. I was suddenly slow in my retreat back to my truck. She was not slow. She moved swiftly to me and soon was almost within arm's reach of me. My vision started to move away from the dead dad over in the snow and to myself. I could now see myself lying on the ground next to my truck, with the woman in black on top of me, her hand pushed hard onto my chest, draining the life out of me. I think she was sending me a warning more than anything, though. I didn't think she actually wanted to kill me. It was like she was telepathically telling me it wasn't my time. She played by the rules, but she was willing to bend them if I didn't stop. I would have to stop. I opened my mouth and told her that, she seemed to accept it. She walked away into the endless white of the snow, and I got in my truck and drove back home. Now I'm cursed. I sit at home every night, knowing who's going to die in my vicinity, and how they are going to die, and knowing I could do something about it but won't. I drink more than I used to, and sometimes when I've had too much, which is almost every night, 
I think about getting into my truck and going to save someone for whom I am their only hope for survival. Maybe I will someday.